This video will discuss principles behind batch normalization and we shall do a hands-on to see it. First, let's consider scaling and the benefits of scaling. Scaling speeds up learning. It'll help us converge to a solution faster since average of inputs closer to zero has been shown to improve convergence for optimal error correction. We may scale either using a normalizer or a standardizer. Normalizer does not change distributions, but the standardizer does. For instance, robust scalar, min-max scalar are examples of normalizers, and a standard scalar is one example of a standardizer. Usually, applications need an input scaling, and depending on your regression problem, you might also have a need for output variable scaling. Let us first generate some data for this problem, and in this case, it's a two-class classification, and the inputs we're going to be doing are standard CARES layers, sequential model, standard scalars, min-max scalar, robust scalars, then matplotlib for plotting. The data generator class has three functions. One is generate data, both x and y, using the make circle function, which is from sklearn. The second is the train test split, which is using the Python's NDRA indexing for splitting between train and test. And the third is plotting the X and Y with different colors representing the different class. We are going to generate 10,000 data points for two class problem. And the output that we get for running this code is something like this. This is the circles data set. Now we are going to create a simple feed forward network to classify this data. And there are two architectures we'll compare side by side. Architecture one has only scaling and architecture 2 has both scaling and batch normalization. Architecture 1 is a naive model with three layers, 50 neurons in the input, 20 for a hidden layer, and one neuron for the output. And if you want to learn how to tune these layers, then check out my video on how to find the right node slash layers for your neural network. Let us now move on and review batch normalization and its benefits. The two key benefits with batch normalization. One is it accelerates learning. And the second is it provides regularization effect since each mini batch is used to normalize the input distribution for the network. And how are we going to use it? We're going to use it either as inputs to the neurons or as inputs to the activation functions. Moving on, architecture 2 has batch normalization in it and it has a total of five layers. First is our input layer with 15 neurons, followed by batch normalization. Then we have our hidden layer with 20 neurons, followed by batch normalization. And then finally, our fifth layer, which is the output layer with one neuron. Let us now review code, and it has three main functions. One is the sequence build function, which is fundamentally building up the sequential model with and without batch normalization. Second is the compile function, which fundamentally compiles a model for a binary cross entropy. The third is our plot function, which is going to be plotting the fit we're going to be doing. Now let's run the code and see the output side by side, comparing different scalars with and without batch normalization. First, we're going to be seeing min-max scalar with and without batch normalization. The first row is batch normalization is equal to false. So there's no batch normalization here for a min-max scalar. And we are reaching an overall accuracy of 80% over the 100 epochs. But if you see the, the architecture with batch normalization, it took only about 20 epochs for it to reach the same 80% accuracy. The loss convergence in this case is also much nicer compared to the case where we didn't have batch normalization, where there is some form of a divergence happening from a loss perspective. Next, we apply robust scalar to the data, and we see the outputs for with and without batch normalization. So this first row is without batch normalization. And here, it has taken about 30 epochs for it to reach the 81%. And there is some loss divergence that we can observe. However, with batch normalization, it took only 20 epochs for it to reach the same 81% and the loss convergence is much smoother. Next, we apply standard scalar to the data 
and we see the outputs with and without batch normalization. Again, without batch normalization, we reach about 81% with 30 epochs and some divergence in the loss convergence. While with batch normalization, we have reached the same 81% in with just 10 epochs and there is very good loss convergence here. On top of it, there's also a good accuracy versus validation accuracy convergence. Even though it took a little bit of time, it has finally converged extremely well and smooth. To summarize, batch normalization accelerates learning, reduces the epochs during training, and improves convergence. It also solves the internal covariate shift problem. It also relaxes the need for using other regularization methods like dropouts. That's all for this video. Good luck to you and see you in the next video.